Interestingly, yeah, you, the nation of go. Canada does not have a national fish, but if we had to nominate one, it would be the walleye. <laughs> These are, are why you come here. East to west, north to south, this elusive predator is scattered throughout this wonderful region. They are wily critters that can be found on any type of structure or cover at any given time. Find a nice little rock pile, drop some chicken wraps down. They often like being in submerged trees, weed beds, rock piles, sand flats, mud basins, and can be caught from the shoreline break to suspend it over the abyss. You go out in deeper water fishing situations in this trolling, a lot of times the fish get a lot bigger real quick. Now with all the varieties of locations they can be in, there's actually a handful of presentations that work the majority of the time. Today on The Edge, we're gonna show you what it takes to catch Canadian walleye. Where else in the world can you go to catch three fish like this? Back to back to back. You know, every year we go up to Canada and fish new bodies of water. And we get in some really, really, really remote places like Ty and I are going to right now. Rock. Ty's guiding me. He's like my eyeball guide. You know, on these lakes, that forage is everything. You know, you run these humps, you run these humps. Look, look, look. When we came over, there was a ton of bait on this. Yeah, right on top of that crest, which is about right there. Got him. Got him. There you go. Definitely some fish on there. There's a lot that's of bait a, on this. If oh. that's a smallmouth, she's a big one. That it can't be a smallmouth. That's got to be a big walleye. These fish in here are so incredibly tough, man. There's definitely a lot of forage for them. They're fat, they're healthy. There you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. That's a good Come one, here, baby. That's a good one, Al. Oh, yeah. That's a healthy one. Ugh. Beautiful fish. Come here. How's that, baby, huh? Okay, what is it, 26? <laughs> it's pretty darn close if it's not. It's fat. Yeah. They're yeah. all fat. Huh? That's what, what, what you call a predator. <laughs> <laughs> Give her a quick measure. I will, just for you. I'm, I'm giving it 26. You are about an inch short. 25. But a fat 25. And, yes. and I'm catching in one of our favorite ways. Jigging. I love it. It's hard to beat a jig for power fishing. The VMC Moon Eye Jig is a great universal bait that you can rig any plastic on. The aspirin-shaped head forces this jig to erratically react when aggressively popped. This time, she wanted a jig. The sleek jig is the newest bait design from VMC and has a tech set hook, which maximizes hook sets and locks fish in place to yeah, secure a solid high. hookup. With either of these two baits, we prefer to use a boot tail or a minnow tail. The boot tail has a slightly slower fall rate and the minnow tail dances more erratically. You have to try both to see which fish prefer on any given day. Nice little chunky one. That one, been on a plain bucktail. I've seen him on this corner. I'm gonna go back and fish through here one more time. Finally, we have the VMC bucktail jig. This bait can be fished with or without a trailer. In shallow water, oftentimes, there is no need for added bulk. Fish eat it just as it is. No matter what jig you use, it's imperative that you rig a barrel swivel around a foot or so above it. This will prevent line twists. That's going to be an eyeball. Oh, oh yeah. There that, we go. That's it, Ty. I think we got what we're looking for. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nice walleye. Nice walleye. Okay, nice you got, walleye. You got the net by you, Chief? I told, I've seen he's, something. He's, uh, he's not ready to come up, though. This is... No, I know. He came to check you out. <laughs> nice to have good drags on these reels. That is for sure. Here she comes. Here she comes. Oh, yeah. Come oh, yeah. Was that a jigging wrap? That is not a jigging wrap. She swallowed that paddle tail. Nice one. Dog nice tooth one. walleye, buddy. Dog tooth walleye. And I'll actually, we came over this hump. Look at that. Do you think they're eating? Well, Just man. absolutely swallowed that thing. Jigging a paddle tail. Got one? Got one. Nice. Good one. He was up on top of it. Was he? Yeah. Let's see what you got here. Nice walleye. Nice walleye. Oh, that's a great walleye. Heck yeah, Dan. Cool. Good way to stay busy during the day. There we go. Cool, nice fish. 
All Way right. to go, Dan. Jigging wraps. Yeah, this is fun. Find a nice little rock pile, drop some jigging wraps down. I, and a lot of other people, am a huge fan of this lure, just because it's so versatile. Catches walleyes, fun to fish, it's engaging, and it works. So this is just the perfect scenario for a jigging wrap. We've got a, clearly a, a hump with hard bottom, and there's rock. There's scattered rock all over, there's some big rocks. Kind of snap the jigging wrap, hits the bottom, snap. And I like to work it kind of fast. I don't know, everyone has their own personal preference, but as soon as it hits the bottom, I snap it, snap it, and you just get in a cadence, and you're just working it. You can pitch it out, snap, 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 all the way back to the boat. So you're covering a tremendous amount of water, and you're gonna trigger those aggressive fish that are in this area. And it's kind of the program. It works pretty much everywhere I've fished, and it's working again today. Anybody that's in the fishing game knows the power and effectiveness of the Rapala Jig and Wrap for multi-species action. If you have not fished with the Jig and Wrap, it's a bait you gotta have in your tackle box. It catches everything. This elegant artificial bait triggers fish into a reactionary bite. Jig and Wrap fish. Now, VMC has added another tweak on terminal tackle that allows this bait to look even more attractive. The bladed hybrid treble is one of the most innovative creations in years. The resin sealed swivel and blade allow for maximum rotation and flash. The blade is connected to the base of the treble in a swivel ensuring a 360 degree rotation. This allows anglers to unleash the full potential of their favorite lure by simply adding a hook while respecting the original action of the lure's design. This treble hook is adding flash and vibration, which are known to be triggering factors when targeting predators all over the world. When you pair the classic action of the jig and wrap with the bladed hybrid treble, the presentation, <laughs> it got even more dangerous. Here's one. Oh yeah, nice fish. Jerry, I might need the net. I'm gonna get the net for you, bud. Just That was up. really cool. That was, you're just <laughs> watching, but it's amazing how good electronics make such a difference up here, isn't it? Really nice is. Great that was fish. fun. You're starting Boy, to pile I'm... up the numbers here too, dude. There we go. Cool. Well, you've caught a lot of nice fish, Dan. This has been fun. This is just a classic summertime pattern. You look for that little bit deeper water humps, points, you know, bars, shoals of some sort. And the cool thing about this jig and wrap is we've fished some that come up to seven feet, others that are in 27, you know, 30 plus feet with the same bait. Works really well, but with those isolated humps and, and high spots, hard bottom things that you'll find are great summer haunts for walleyes. It's definitely working on Eagle Lake today. Wow, look at that bunch of walleyes there. Mark that spot right there. Yeah, that was a big one. You get Mr. Husky Jerk to come slow, slow rolling through there, and you get those big boys to bite. You can see on the depth finder all the bait fish that are out here, and there's a monster school that's literally hundreds, if not th hundreds of thousands of tulabies, a very rich uh, prey fish for the walleyes, pike, and uh, muskies that swim in this lake. And intermittently, those fish go out and feed on them, especially the real big ones. But trolling is really one of the most critical uh, techniques to go find and catch these fish because they're spread out over vast areas. But the biggest thing is duplication of the system. Like right now, we're seeing them on about maybe 25 to 30 foot down. So what we're trying to do is put these uh, Husky Jerk 14s at about that depth level. Line counter reels are really key to be able to duplicate that same depth. We actually are running about 100 feet of line out with 10 pound test 832 braid and about 15 or 20 feet of a fluorocarbon leader, like 12 pound fluorocarbon leader. And that's getting those baits to that depth level. There we go, we just hit 100. The nice thing about this is this line counter, or not the line counter, is the clicker that makes you aware that the fish is on the bait. So that's sort of nice. But the other thing is you always set the drag relatively light with this. So we'll pop them into the rod holder. Just hit bottom on that one. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one thing that's really critical for this is the boat control. And what I mean by that, right now I'm using a 9.9 .9 Pro Kicker. 
The cool thing is, is the ability to not only efficiency with this engine, but to, you know, to adjust your speed by increments of a tenth of a mile an hour. I can actually, right now, we want those baits running about 2.4 miles an hour, and I can easily adjust it, fine tune, and lock the, tr the motor at that speed, and we're really moving along evenly. That one hit. Yep, they're, they're fish on, <laughs> fish on, fish on. There we go. Oh, easy. Big one. Big one. Yeah? Yeah. Nice. Big wallow? Yep. Boy, that didn't take long. No, it didn't. We're uh -huh. seeing fish all over out. Deep water, big oh, yeah, giant uh, schools yeah, of suspended uh, tulipies and whitefish. And so many different times, the real key to catching these fish are line counter reels and duplication of uh, trolling crankbaits. But the key is, is to get tuned into the depth level those fish are at. And we've just put out some uh, Husky Jerk 14s. <laughs> Our first pass went over them, boom. But we'll, take, we'll spin around out here and show you how many bait fish are out here. And all the big fish in the system, whether they be muskies, big pike, and walleyes, are feeding on this giant school of bait fish that are out here. That's come here, buddy. Come on. There we go. Perfect. That did not take long. Look at that. Let me just see if I can get her out of the net with a minimal amount of work here. Bring it swinging around here. Yeah. Now let me get this uh, hook out. You want to grab me the pliers? Yeah. Oop, it's not too bad if you got a pliers handy. Okay, there we go. There we go. The cool thing is, is about crankbait trolling, a lot of times, you know, we've been up uh, fishing in shallower water and catching a lot of moderate sized fish. You go out in deeper water fishing situations and it's trolling, a lot of times the fish get a lot bigger real quick because you're hunting, well, these are the largest fish in the system, whether they be pike and walleyes. We'll get her back in the water. Beautiful fish. Over the years, the Down Deep Husky Jerk has been a tried and true lure of choice for many anglers. Now we have an offering that takes it to all new depths with the same tempting action. The Down Deep Husky Jerk will reach depths of 20 feet when trolled and will run up to 10 feet when cast and retrieved. This is a perfect choice when you want a lure that runs straight and true even when trolled fast and deep. The neutral buoyancy allows the lure to suspend on a pause in a retrieve or a powerful trolling turn. This feature is what trips fish's triggers. In the net, drop some weight. They keep getting bigger. That's 20 gold right there. This lure has proven over and over that it's a fish catching machine. Other than Rapala crankbaits, these guys are in here following alewife around. And we're following them around. And they're eating. We're putting them in the boat today. Hey, I'm Rob Henry. I'm here with my good buddy, Daryl Ensall. It's mid-December. We're out here on the Bay of Quinney for giant walleye. So as we know out here on the Bay of Quinney, I mean, this is a world-renowned fishery. Uh, right. there, there's a few bodies of water in North America that produce walleye giant walleye like the Bay of Quinney does. Uh, right now the graph's showing a lot of fish up off bottom. Uh, we're looking for active fish, suspended fish. This time of year in December, the bait fish, the alewife, they come in to the bay and the walleye follow behind them. That's why these big walleye are in here, setting up for the spawn for spring, putting the feed bag on. See that nice gold yet? I see color. See color? Here we go. Beauty job, bud. Beauty job there. That's a great start right yep. there. Yeah. There you go. That's what we come here for. So here we are on Bay of Quinney. We're all set up. As you can see, we've got uh, our four rods per side, eight rods in the boat. We've got two cameramen in the boat today. That's four guys on the boat. We're allowed two rods each. All our rods are the same rods, the same action. We want that same action on these rods because all our rod tips will line up here. As we go further down, we've got our planer boards. From our planer boards, we're set up with different lengths from the board to the snap weight and then the lead from the snap weight to the lure. So basically on the outside right now, we're running 100 feet of line to our snap weight, which is a two ounce snap weight, 100 feet of line to the board. Our next line in, We've got, the, we've got the, the same size snap weight. It's a two ounce snap weight. We're going 80 feet from our lure to the snap and then 160 
to the board. Our third line in, we've got a 60 foot lead from our lure to our three ounce snap weight and then to the board will be 160 feet. Our inside board here, we've got a lead of 50 feet from our lure to our three ounce snap weight and then from the snap weight, 140 to the board. So with respect to our different weights and our different leads that we have on these lines, it allows us to roll these baits over top. So our outside lines are a little bit higher and then progressively when they come in, they're a little bit deeper. The reason that we have the same action on these rods is because all of our rod tips will line up. We'll be able to see if we pick up a, uh, a smaller walleye or a silver bass just by that tip and how it's folding over a little bit further than the others. If we get a bigger fish on, uh, a nice sized walleye, we'll see those boards jerk back, fall in behind the boat, we know we have a fish on. We got 30 pound braid, at suffix, with a double uni knot tied to a 20 pound fluorocarbon leader. I would use a minimum eight to 10 feet of line. It's invisible in the water, abrasion resistance, because those walleye have sharp teeth and we don't want to be losing them. And we use a variety of different uh, rappler lures. Today they're munching on deep down huskies. Some days we're using TD-11s, those are the tail dancers. Um, other days, jointed husky jerks. So because we're pulling two and three ounce snaps, this braid likes to slide through these clips. So we're gonna double wrap these. So that way we can keep the clips apart with a nice loop in this line, right there like that so that board can track properly. This is, this is real, this feels good. Yeah. yeah. Can we push that three out just a little bit more? The three? Yeah. My hands are cold from that last one. We just put that last one back in the water as we were getting out of the net. Another board went off here, so Rob's on this one. Feels like a good one, looks like a good one. Clear this lace off for you. Would you be so kind? You wanna keep your rod at 11 o'clock and just slowly winch these fish in. You don't wanna reel down and reef back and reel down and reef back. They have very soft mouth. You don't wanna pull them hooks out. Oh, Rob's fighting this other fish here. We've had three fish in about the last seven minutes. We got a little bit of a mess going on. I'm gonna clean up some of these rods, but that's the way it is out here in the Bay of Quinney. Got into an active school of fish, and it's just been fish after fish after fish. You feel it in the arm right here. Burning? <laughs> well, you haven't had much of a rest in the last little while. No. Come on up, baby. Yep, deep color. We got her. All right. Where else in the world can you go to catch three fish like this? Back to back to back. It's Quinny right there. Woo! Speaks for itself. <laughs>